1080p ultra gaming sounds fantastic, but if you want that and a gaming PC that looks baller for not that much money, I got you covered. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. And just in case you guys were all thinking that the smack talking headshotting gameplay was me being serious. Guys, I really am just kidding around. I'm, I'm not that good. Please don't take me seriously. Anyways, for today's video, we'll first be jumping right into the parts list inside this $700 1080p Ultra Gaming PC. We'll talk about what other parts I would recommend around this price point for some alternatives. And of course, we're gonna be benchmarking the heck out of it. First though, a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by GVG Mall, an online key reseller with our favorite Windows 10 Pro keys. If you're looking to remove that nasty Windows 10 unactivated watermark on your latest gaming PC, head on down to the links in the description. Here you'll find a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for under $7 bucks, but we want it cheaper than that. Select buy now and enter the discount code ZTT18 for an exclusive 18% off discount, which drops the price down to just 13 bucks. Go through the rest of the purchasing options. I'd recommend PayPal and within a minute or so, you'll get your Windows 10 Pro key. Now on your PC, click start and type in activation and press enter. Choose change product key, paste in your new key and bang, Windows 10 is now activated. This is my personal way of activating my PCs. Check out my purchased order history here. So grab a Windows 10 key for your with the link in the description using discount code ZTT18. And before kicking things off, I just want to remind you again that even though I've been calling myself the Fortnite God and been talking a lot of smack lately, I'm just trying to provide some extra entertainment value for these videos. We actually sat down and talked to my wife, aka the Fortnite Goddess herself over on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash ZaxTechTurf, by the way, where I stream every Tuesday and Thursday. And I'm not nearly as good as Fortnite as she is, but yeah, just wanted to make that clear for you all. I'm just trying to have some fun, you guys. Like maybe we'll do a little bit of a headshot there there maybe build a pc there some more headshots right there you know we're just trying to have some fun you know just headshots all day. All right, so kicking things off with the CPU, this is yet again the Ryzen 3 3100, which costs anywhere from 100 to $120 brand new. Sorry if you've heard me say this a dozen times already, but it's rocking four cores and eight threads that can boost up to 3.9 gigahertz, and it's just an absolute fantastic value for any new gaming PC build around $500 to honestly like eight or even $900. To go along with that, Micro Center sent out this GTX 1660 Super from MSI. Not the best timing to be going with an MSI graphics card, but we'll move past that. That. The 1660 Supers are currently sitting around $220 to $240 on Amazon, and this is definitely another value play in terms of price to performance. Speaking of value play, Micro Center is definitely the hookup when it comes to sniping good deals packed with value, especially on their famous CPU and motherboard combos. I'm always like a kid in a candy store every time I go to one of their locations. Setting one up in Pittsburgh would be much appreciated by the way, Micro Center, and big thanks to them for hooking us up with some of these parts. They also sent over our storage solution for the day, and this is the Crucial P1 1TB M.2 NVMe S. SSD, which you guys know I use in a ton of my build guides. If you want to save some extra money, you could certainly go with the 500 gigabyte version of this. But honestly, I would really just recommend staying here on the P1 because it's just such a great M.2 NVMe drive that's always at an affordable price. Moving on next up, we have our motherboard. And now this is something a bit different than we're used to seeing. This is the Biostar B550MH, and it's actually the first B550 MOBO that I've had in my studio. This allows us to stick more towards the budget side of things, but we do have the latest and greatest features that the B550 platform has to offer including that PCIe 4.0, and it has all the other functions that we need for a mid-range gaming PC like this. Do keep in mind that if you're looking to save just a little bit more money, you could stick with a much more budget B450 motherboard as long as it's Ryzen 3000 ready. Something like the Gigabyte DS3H usually sits around $70 and allows you to get that final price tag for the build even lower. So next up, I definitely wanna talk about this case, and Lee and Lee was actually cool enough to send this one over. It's my first time working with Lee and Lee and it's nice to feature one of their cases on the channel. This is the Landcool 215 and it's really nice to see a more budget friendly option coming from them. This is certainly what one would call an airflow optimized case. Right out of the box, it comes with two pre-installed 200 millimeter ARGB fans and even a black rear 120 millimeter fan. The entire front panel is a mesh material, which we know is great for temperatures. And it's even a pretty tough material, not that cheap mesh that you sometimes see. Overall, the case has a great aesthetic with the full tempered glass side panel 
panel, nice and clean PSU shroud, a big open vent at the top if you want even more airflow, and all of this coming in at $70 is a really great price for this kind of performance. This is definitely another one of those cases that you could use for PC flipping to make some money because it comes with those RGB fans pre-installed at a really great price, but just to list out an alternative part if you want to save even more money, I recommend the Cooler Master MB311L that I just featured in my $500 build guide. That one is also really great for PC flipping, but doesn't have nearly as good as airflow as this Land Cool 215. Next up, we got to loop back to this RAM finally, and shout out to Corsair for hooking us up with the Vengeance RGB Pro 2x8GB kit clocked at 3200MHz. Surprisingly, it's been a while since I've used RGB RAM in my build guides, but I wanted to match some RGB colors to go along with these huge 200mm RGB fans up at the front, and I think this ended up being a solid combination. Just like always, if you do want to save a few bucks, I would certainly recommend the YOLO kit that I've been going with a lot. Definitely doesn't look as baller as the Corsair Vengeance Pro, but you'll get the same amount of performance for a little cheaper. And finally, the last part that we have here today is the power supply. And now don't hate me for this, but I did end up going with yet another EVGA 550 watt N1. You guys all know this by now because of the famous LTT tier list, but the M1 gets a lot of hate for being tier E and apparently somewhat unsafe. I'm not going to argue with people that are much smarter than me that review power supplies all day, but I've never had an issue with them. And since you can easily scoop these up on EVGA B stock for $30 every Wednesday, I had to include this one in our build today. Some people say the M1 goes boom, but honestly, the only thing that's going boom is, oh, oh, where'd he go? That guy, and this guy's gonna go boom too. With all that being said, here's what the final parts list is looking like, and you can see that the total came out to just over $700 for me. I definitely listed out some alternative parts that you can use to achieve this same exact gaming performance, so you could probably get this closer to like $600 if you really wanted to. Now it's time for the benchmarks, however, and just like always, we'll start with Fortnite because the Fortnite God is craving some camera time. Let me know down in the comment section if you'd rather have the Fortnite God as cover these parts of the video, by the way. And with the $700 system in 1080p and pro settings, I got a solid FPS average of 198. All right, ton of people landing here. This cannot possibly be good. Do I hear somebody in this house? Oh boy. Oh boy, that's a nasty gun. Okay, this is going to be a good round. I can feel it. Look, here we go. How is that not landing? There we go. There's one kill. Many more to come. Oh, he's right there. Oh my god. Sit down. There he is. Sit down, son. Oh, behind me, behind me. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> nice try, though. Nice try. Next up was Rainbow Six Siege, and just like always, I used the built-in benchmarking tool for this one, and in 1080p in ultra settings, I got an FPS average of 225. Just like I said in the beginning, 1080p ultra gaming for not a crazy price. Now, after that game was my absolute new favorite game, I honestly haven't been this excited about a competitive shooting title possibly ever in my life. This is Rogue Company, and in 1080p in ultra settings, I got 150 FPS, but for some reason, the FPS is capped to 150, so it wasn't that great for benchmarking. Sit down. This dude just hide him right here. There we go. Got him. There they are. There's one. There's two. Hello. You can sit down. There they are. Right behind us. You can't sneak up on me, man. Sit down. There they are. <laughs> you did. Hello. Where are you trying to go, man? You can't sneak up on me, man. You guys keep failing. Hello. Out of oh, gotta finish this dude off. There we go. Following that was Borderlands 3, another one that I'm still enjoying, but as a much more chill game. And in 1080p and high settings, I got an FPS average of 62. In ultra settings, I got around the mid to high 40, so we couldn't quite get the 1080p ultra in all of these super demanding AAA titles. Valorant was up after that, and in 1080p and medium settings, I got 206 FPS, which was certainly enough frames to land a couple of headshots. We've only been sniping in these videos, so let's try something a little different today. There's one kill. Okay, okay. Oh. Kind of surprised myself, but I mean, the headshots are still coming, man. They're just all day. <laughs> I can't control myself, man. It's headshot after headshot. After headshot. This is the Vandal gun, by the way. I have no idea if it's good. Okay. 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 Oh, can we do long distance, though? Okay, it's a really good gun. I can already tell. It's all day. 
Far Cry New Dawn followed and back to our normal 1080p ultra settings using the built-in benchmarking tool, I got an FPS average of 78. After that was Counter-Strike Global Offensive, definitely not a game you want to run in anything but 1080p and pro settings, and with that I got a super high FPS average of 278. Alright, so just like Valorant, we're not going to use a snipe, let's give our opponents a fair, a fair competition today. That guy had no aim. I'll show you what aim looks like, man. That That's how you aim right there. Spray and pray, baby. Oh, watch this. Also got the fin... All right, so we definitely have some sweaty mofos in this lobby today. Oh, my. This should be fun. Sweaty, dude. Who else is sweaty over here? This guy? Oh, no. He definitely wasn't sweaty, man. Finesse. 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 Got him. Hello. Sit down. Not again. Are you serious? Oh my god. How was that not a headshot? Thank you. The brand new Horizon Zero Dawn followed, definitely demanding AF to run still, and in 1080p and high settings, using the benchmarking tool, I got 74 FPS. Once again, 1080p Ultra got just around 50 FPS, but I would personally recommend just sticking with high for this one as well. Apex Legends followed up after that. I'm not good enough at this game yet to include any webcam footage for you all. Let me know down in the comment section if you want to see that, however. And in 1080p and high settings, I got 126 frames per second. And finally, for our last gaming benchmark, we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Only a few more videos left where I'm benchmarking this and not Cold War, by the way, and in 1080p and medium settings, I got an FPS average of 112. I think I'm just ready for the new Call of Duty to come out, man. I'm just not vibing with this one anymore. It's just people like that. Everyone's just camping left and right or sliding and shoot. It's just, come on, man. Enough of the negative vibes, though. Let's let's get a couple kills here. Look at this dude. Look at this dude. He's just camping in the corner. Like Stay positive. Stay positive. Positivity is the key to success. Sit down. Took a whole clip, but sit down. Oh, oh, okay. Is this dude, look at this dude, he's still back here. That's unbelievable. Oh my. Look at this dude, camping. Look at this guy. Sit down. Uh oh, did that dude just get sniped? I got you, man. I got you. Do we check the spot one more time? If he's here, I'm going to lose my mind. Some dude's over here. Oh, the camper found a new position. Look at him. For a quick non-gaming benchmark, we have 3D Mark Time Spy, just so we can see the comparisons across all my build guides. And this system was able to crank out a score of 5,661. So if you're thinking about putting this $700 gaming PC together and you might need some help, then feel free to join our Discord server that's linked down below. We also have a dedicated build guides channel in there for a ton of other ideas from both me and our community. If you're looking for a PC build that's a bit more baller than this one today, feel free to click the video that's now up there grabbing some screen time. And finally, I hope you enjoyed this video.